Welcome to the tutorial for Lesson 8.2, Modeling and Solving Linear Systems. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to translate word problems into systems of linear equations, interpret the information from a graph of a linear system, and solve problems involving systems of linear equations. The ability to translate words or phrases into the language of mathematics is an important skill for solving problems in context. There are a limited number of mathematical operations, but there are many phrases that can be used to describe the operations. For example, all of the following situations can rep be represented by the expression 7x plus 3. 7 kilometers for a length of time and then 3 more kilometers. $7 per person plus $3, or seven times as many years increased by $3. So there's lots of different words that can be represented by these things, plus, increased by, or more than, are all ways to say addition. Is is a word that represents equals. When it comes to subtraction, however, the translation requires greater consideration. So if we look here, x minus 3 is not equal to x3 minus x, unless x is equal to 3. But say x was equal to 5. 5 minus 3 is equal to 2, but 3 minus 5 is equal to negative 2. So those examples even though would not be the same. So you have to be careful with subtraction. And be careful of the wording. x minus 3 means 3 less than a number. But if you have 3 minus x, you're taking 3 decreased by a number. Situations involving quantities that change at a constant rate can be represented algebraically by a system of linear equations. So you really need to remember that when you have a constant rate of change, you're probably going to use a linear system to represent it. Let's have a look at example one where it's looking at two options for renting ski and snowboard equipment at a ski resort. Option A charges a one-time $30 fee and then $8 per hour. Option B charges $14 per hour and has no initial fee. These two options are going to help us set up our two linear equations. How do we know that the situations are linear? We know they are linear because they both have a constant rate of change. So now that we've decided that the options represented by linear equations, we can identify unknown values and assign variables. Just looking at the question and the situation, we're going to have an amount of time that the rental has been used for and the total cost of the rental in dollars. So if we pick two variables, we can let t represent the amount of time for the rental in hours, and we can let C represent the total cost of the rentals. Next, we can write an equation for each rental option to model the cost. You can use the y equals mx plus b form, where the slope represents the change per hour, and the y-intercept represents the initial or starting cost. So for option A, okay, we're going to have the cost of the rental is equal to, we had $8 times the number of hours would give us the total cost for the hours that we rented, plus the initial fee of $30. And that gives us one of our equations. For option B, you're going to have the cost of that option is equal to $14 times the number of hours that you rented for. So here we have a system of linear equations. They're both equations of degree one, so they are linear. And we can go ahead and solve this system graphically and find the intercept once we graph them. When you're graphing these on your calculator, you want to use y for c and you want to use x for t in your calculator so that it can read those equations properly. And this is what your graph is going to look like approximately. 
So you're going to have time on the x-axis and cost on the y-axis. And then your y-intercept of your second line is 0. So it's going to start at 0, 0. But the first line started at 30, the initial cost. The, the first line that starts at 30 is increasing at a rate of $8 per hour. So it doesn't have as steep of a slope as the line increasing at $14 per hour. The lines will meet at 5, 70. And you can find that on your graphing calculator or use graphing paper to draw both lines and use the slope until you find the point where the two lines will meet. So what does the solution represent here if the solution is 5 comma 70? It means that after five hours, because that's our x-axis value, that the cost will be $70 for both of the options. In example two, we have two pools draining at the same time. A larger pool containing 54,675 liters of water at the start drains at a rate of 25 liters per minute. And a smaller pool that contains 35,400 liters of water at the start drains at a rate of 10 liters per minute. We're going to model the draining of the pools algebraically using a system of linear equations and then represent the system graphically to find the solution and what that solution represents in terms of the question. So first we have to define our variables. So we have two unknowns. The first one, which is your independent variable, is time. So we're going to let t represent time. But not unlike the last example that was time was in hours, this time time is going to be in minutes because our rate is in liters per minute. So we're going to have time in minutes. And then we're going to have our second variable being the total volume of the water at whatever the time has passed. So we're going to let V equal the volume of water remaining after however much time has passed. Then we're going to look at writing our equations using those variables. So using the y equals mx plus b form again, slope is going to represent this time the change in volume per minute, and the y-intercept is the initial volume. So slope is always the change or the, the rate of change in the question, and the y-intercept will always be the initial or starting point. So if we write uh, an equation for the larger pool first, we can represent its situation with the volume that is remaining in the pool is equal to the initial starting volume, which is 54,675 liters, and then we're going to subtract 25 liters per minute, so 25 times the number of minutes would give you the total amount of, volume of water that has drained after the certain amount of time. You can also write this so the mx term goes first. So you'd have v equals negative 25t plus 54,675. This makes sense to us, though, because if we look at our slope, it's negative 25. Our slope should be negative because we're decreasing our amount of water. And the initial starting point is the y-intercept added on to the end. Now let's write an equation for the smaller pool. The smaller pool has a, and whatever its volume is, okay, and it started at 35,400 liters and is decreasing at a rate of 10 liters per minute. So 10 times the number of minutes will tell you how much it's decreased by. You can also write this equation with the slope first. So we can write it as volume is equal to negative 10 times t plus the initial volume of 35,400. All right, so if we're going to represent that system of linear equations for the pools graphically, we want to graph each equation. So we're going to take the equation for the larger pool and we're going to type it in for y1 in our y equals menu in our graphing calculator. Instead of using t, make sure you use x. 
And for the smaller pool, we're going to type that equation in for y2. And again, instead of using t, you need to use x. That way your calculator will recognize the variable. Once you have this graph, it should look like this. Now, it won't tell you the intersection right away. We have to go find that. But it will show you the two lines. The larger pool is going to be the first line that it draws. And the smaller pool will be the second line that it draws. Now, if we want to find the intercept of these two graphs, that will be the solution to the system of equations. From this graph, you can then find the intersection of the two lines using the menu second, trace, and picking number five, the intersect. It will then take you back to the graph and ask you for the first curve. Move your flashing cursor somewhere close to, but not touching, the intersect of on one of the lines, and then type, just press enter. Then we'll ask you for the second curve, but after you press enter the first time, the cursor then would have moved to the second curve, so you don't have to move your cursor anymore, you just press enter again when it asks you for the second curve. Then it'll ask you for a guess. You don't need to move the cursor at all, you just press enter, and it will then tell you the intersect, which is shown on this calculator screen, of 1,285 and y equals 22,550. The meaning of that point of intersection or the solution to this question is that when you have 1,285 minutes of the pools draining, they will each contain 22,550 liters of water. So they'll have the same amount of water after the same amount of time at that time. Please have a look at part two of this tutorial video for an explanation of example three and the key ideas of this lesson.